Ready to go. Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Betty Uribe coming to you from Southern California. And boy, do we have a wonderful show for you. We have an incredible lineup of people. I had an opportunity to meet with all of them. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm uh, the CEO of Effectus Enterprises, Inc. And I have a company that focuses on building, um, if you think about the word team, tools, education, access to capital, mentoring, and social responsibility for entrepreneurs. And, I'm a, uh, and I've got a couple of other companies, but I won't bother you with all of that. Uh, what's important is I've been in the financial industry for over 25 years as a C-level executive. Yes, I broke the glass ceiling. And, uh, and I've been dealing a lot with a lot of entrepreneurs in today's environment and what's happening right now with COVID-19 affecting all of our lives, our personal and our business lives. And so I'm very excited to have this lineup of people because every single one of them has a genius in what in their in individual fields and they've got a lot of tangible tactical information on things that you can actually do for yourself um, and for your companies on a personal level and on a business level. First, I'm so excited that Amanda Ma asked me to do this for you uh, and to host this, to be your host, because I have a personal experience with Amanda. I have seen Amanda. She's the CEO and founder of Innovate Marketing Group. I have seen, uh, Amanda, I've seen you put on events that are top-notch events in Washington, D.C., in Dallas, in Los Angeles, and every single time I go to an event, and I know that Amanda is in charge of the event, I know that it's going to be a full of an event. Uh, so uh, from the timing, from the materials, from the people, and now she's doing this for her own company, which I'm very excited. So today we're going to talk about overcoming crisis. Amanda has been uh, an award-winning live uh, experience agency that provides full service events and activation for top brands. And again, I've had personal experience with her. Her group, Innovative Marketing, is known for her dynamic live experience moments. When you walk into an event, it's not just an event, it's an experience. And every single individual on her team is in charge. It's, it's almost like going to Disneyland where everybody just creates an experience for you. That's what it feels like, except that instead of just being at Disneyland, you create an experience that you can take right back into your company, right back into your business. She's an industry professional with over 15 years of experience in this, in the event production, event launch, activation, experimental, experiential marketing. Uh, if you want to try something new, she's open to doing that as well. And she's a co-founder of Pamper Me Fabulous in 2008. And then she founded Innovative Marketing. She was a co-chair of the Asian Business Association in Los Angeles, board of directors and former chair of the Asian Pacific Community Fund. So what she's going to be sharing with you today is um, all about the outlook for any of you when it comes to uh, marketing. So Amanda, What's your outlook for events industry today? Everything has changed so much. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Thank you, Betty. That was quite an introduction. I should hire you all the time to be my to introduce me. Um, in terms of the outlook, I mean the overall events and marketing industry right now, especially with events, is quite challenging. You know, like literally in the beginning of March, we were on a high on our company. We were producing an event you know, coordinating with the White House and we had the President of the United States or four cabinet secretaries there. And two weeks later, it was a mandate, stay at home. You know, so with that, within two weeks, a lot of events was either canceled or postponed, right? Yeah. But now with, with four weeks in, we're helping our client pivot. Like, what can we be doing? Because even if we can do life events, what is the option now? So we have very quickly come up with solution with our team and also talk with our partners who do that. Um, you know, it's been interesting because we all know we will get better, but we just don't know when. 
So you've had to pivot your own business. I mean, and, and I've seen you with the president of the United States, with the current president and with the previous president and with cabinet people and with very high level people at all in person. So tell us how you are pivoting in this environment. So what we have done is, you know, put together and become the expert in terms of virtual events. And we're doing that beyond what you just call like Zoom. You know, so a lot of people think like, oh, virtual event. Okay, I'll just Zoom. I already know how. I watch a YouTube video. And to be honest, I also watch a YouTube video in order to make sure our webinar goes well. But it's beyond that. You know, it's a lot more professional. We have an interface. So we actually build a website for you. Um, there's a whole platform. It's almost like a regular event and it's very organized. You could have speakers, breakout session. In between the virtual event, we could even have entertainer, entertainment. So normally at a regular event, we'll probably like have yoga in the morning, right? This one, we could do a yoga breakout. We could have someone lead it virtually. We could have a, you know, micro networking for the in between sessions, we also can do like have a live DJ. I know people have been doing that just on their own as well, but it's a lot more professional. Yeah. So, so a little known fact, um, one of the speakers today uh, is playing the guitar quite a bit at home. So if I wanted Carlos to come into my event and play the guitar <laughs> all the way from Spain, by the way, would he be able to do that? Yes, Carlos, we'll, we'll be sure um, to call you, to add you oh, to oh, our- Only, only if Kalika plays the piano. Only <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, I think we have an orchestra here, right? <laughs> yes, well-balanced piano here. Yeah, um, and there's so much capability, right? And I think the most important thing about this virtual event is also unlike Zoom or other platform, we can build a, so that the interface also have matrix because a lot of people are wondering, okay, how many people attended my event? You know, we have, we could show you matrix on viewer intention, retention, live viewing activity, same with page views, surveys, right? Surveys is always such a pain, but now you could do that right away. And also contact information and which can also lead to lead generation, right? Oh, and for certain, yeah. Because when, when you're putting out a lot of free because a lot of people are doing this for free right now it's mm -hmm. wonderful to be able to generate some leads and some people that are interested in your contact content and then uh by by getting these matrices then you know which area had the highest peak in the highest right, right? so yeah. if you brought carlos and carlos playing the piano had the highest and then kalika got on there with her piano i'm sorry carlos with the guitar and then kalika got on with the piano and she got higher ratings than you would know that you would want kalika more than yes. carlos Ooh, i don't know about that <laughs> okay so uh you have a slide talking about uh, the virtual event walk us through that yeah so i wanted to show you guys um you know some of the things that we have advising our client to think about, because now a lot more people are reaching out to us and asking about virtual event versus four weeks ago, they were like, well, let's see how this pans out, right? But four weeks has gone by, so they're, they're probably getting calls from their senior management, like you guys got to figure something out because we still have to meet. Right. Um, and then some of the clients who have events coming up, maybe they need to pivot. So actually this week, we're, um, we have a virtual event, our very first one that we're helping our own client. We've done it before as well. But I think with virtual event, it's very important you understand what is your ultimate goal, right? Some people just say, oh, I'm gonna do a virtual event, but why are you doing this, right? Does it make sense for your event? Because not every event makes sense to do a virtual event, right? you know? Um, consider the contingency plan. What are your best action steps to achieve what you're looking for? I think those are all very important. For planning, because now it's all virtual, so, the content is always very important and that's what you need to focus on, but also the delivery of the content, right? We need to be a little bit more animated, right? Um, and making sure the sound is good. If the speaker's sound is not good, people can't hear it, they'll immediately lose interest. Right. Have a strong MC and host like we have today with Betty, you know, someone who's engaging because you need someone to help keep everything on track and make sure to continue to engage, right? Like come back, we're going to go on a lunch break, quote unquote, or we're going to have a yoga session. Please tune back in in 15 minutes. 
right? So people that don't want to do the yoga session, now they could tune back in 15 minutes to restart on the conference. In terms of breaks and transition, you know, this is the time, just like how we do at a life event, usually during breaks and transition, we'll promote the sponsors. You could do the same thing here. You can actually do it on the website itself with the interface that we built for you guys. Um, and then it will promote the sponsor or people you want to highlight. You can even do surprise and delights. It doesn't mean if you're not there in person, you can't do it, you know, but you could, um, I've, we talked about doing digital promo codes, virtual swag bags, right? Into as far as like raffle or you send the swag bag beforehand. So they actually receive it that day. So imagine all of us right now, we're picking up like a swag bag. And those are so much fun because then people actually get something for dialing up to your event as opposed to other people's events. And so when they get something that's of value for free and that is quality, it's not just a throwaway, but something that's really quality, that's what keeps them with you. I really like that. What else? What else? This is fun. Um, and of course, the most important, strong internet connection, right? Because oh. the kind is nodding. Um, yeah, because if you don't have strong connection, and then what we do is like we prepare all that on the back end, so then the client don't have to worry, right? Um, if that's like super important. Yeah, a lot of people forget they prepare everything, and we ask them, uh, "What's your internet connection? We need a hardwire." They're like, "Why?" We're like, "You cannot. We need strong connection." Yeah. Yes, yes, we yeah. do. Oh my goodness! So this is wonderful. Just so that everybody knows that is watching us. We're going to have a time for Q&A at the end of all of the speakers. So save your questions because we will leave plenty of time for you to ask your questions. And then if you have any other questions that we're not able to answer, just put them in the chat and we will send you the answers afterwards. We'll publish the answers afterwards. So um, Amanda, what else do you have for us? We have maybe one minute left, a couple minutes left. Sure, here are just some example of like the virtual you know, this is what was schedule look like, and here's what the presentation will look like. So you get a PowerPoint and present, presenter with question button. Um, and like I mentioned, the matrix, this is something our clients love because they want to know and hold people accountable, right? So they want to say, what did Betty log in? Yep. It's all about the metrics. It's all about what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I love that, the fact that you're asking them at the very beginning, why are you doing yeah. And then at the end of the day is how much by when, right? What are you creating based on uh, what you put out? So I love it. Correct. Um, another fun thing we're doing is virtual team building. So we're actually doing this for our own team. Um, I, don't, I hope they're not logged into this webinar because it's supposed to be a surprise. Um, they, <laughs> they actually have a shipment coming to all their houses. So we're going to a virtual team building I send them, we send them Legos to everybody's house. So we're going to build it and have a mini competition to see who finishes the fastest. Um, hopefully my kids don't get on the Lego before I do, but we're going to build it together and then show the end result. But this is how you could keep your team engaged even if you're offsite. You know, we also are offering like DIY canvas kits, scavenger hunt. So Yes, I understand people are locked in, they can't go anywhere else, but basically the scavenger hunt is they have to, we have a list of things they have to look for around their house. Oh my goodness. How, so this is how you create your magic, Amanda. When I come to your meetings, any meeting that you put on, every single employee that is dressed in black at all of you, <laughs> they are so engaging and they're having fun and they're all focused on the customer. The experience is superb. It is an impeccable experience. So you do all of these things for your people. No wonder they want everybody to have fun. Yeah, Thank we have to set an example, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you do that so well. Thank you so much, Amanda. Well, next we have um, Kalika Yap. And Kalika Yap, I'm so excited. Is there anything else um, that you have. Did you want to say anything else? We just have just a few seconds before we go to the next speaker. No, I'm good. I'm and going to switch over um, so Kalika can share her slides. Wonderful. So Kalika Yap is the founder and CEO of Citrus Studios, Orange and Bergamont, LuxLink, and The Waxing Company. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, she's a, seri a se serial entrepreneur and just manages to carry all of these things with class, finesse, grace, and brilliance. 
So Kalika uh, is an inventor and author of the Little Bram book, which is being released by Harper Collins. So we're so excited about it. Can't wait to read it on April 14th. So just around the corner. She's a member leader of the Entrepreneurs Organization and she is a leader in Entrepreneurs Organization. I know that because I'm part of it. And, and she's just this icon at Entrepreneurs Organization. She's hosted the EO Wonder podcast. Um, and she's going to be sharing with you some business branding tactics uh, during a crisis. And this is really, really important. It's an opportunity for you to brand yourself. And then understanding your brand archetypes. So with that, Kalika, take it away. Thank you, Betty. You're fantastic. I think the last time we saw each other, we were um, posing for the cover of the LA Business Journal. <laughs> So we always see each other on events. So, so anyway, hi everyone. I'm Kalika. Um, I don't know if, can you guys see my screen? I don't know if it's showing up properly, but I have um, a couple of tips regarding branding in this day and age of, uh, you know, COVID. Um, so I wanted to share some stats with you. You know, as social distancing becomes the norm, we're just beginning to see the economic effects of this pandemic. Experts like Goldman Sachs are predicting that the real global gross domestic product could contract and you know, decline as much as 1% around the world. And if you can take a look at that, it's $802 billion. And so what does that mean? It means that, you know, all avenues of business will feel the pinch. In the U.S., um, a recent survey revealed that 56% of brands expect to see some or significant downside due to the coronavirus, and 33% of brands are still waiting to see. So as brands, you know, we need to really empathize with what's happening with our consumers today. You can download... Um, so if you're in the 33% category where you really don't know what's going to happen, I would really recommend that you download basic reports and statistics that can help inform your marketing decisions by going to um, statista.com. This is where I got this slide. And when reviewing these stats, just make sure that you also benchmark around what your own gut or intuition is telling you. So as you can see, you know, some people are um, having issues with their mental health. Do these statistics resonate with your lifestyle or your friends? So being observant to the fluctuating moods and behaviors of your audience is really key to understanding not only the trends now, but also in the future. And so as, is this the same slide? Okay, yeah. So as you can see, you know, consumers are shifting their lifestyle. They're also shifting their values. And, you know, while we really don't know what the long-term effects are going to be, and it's really unclear, we know that there's going to be massive consumer shifts taking place every single day. Like, in particular, I see, I'm seeing like in consumer packaged goods, CPG, we're already experiencing dramatic swings across many areas with expectation that some behaviors will actually become part of the new moral, new norm. Um, you know, one thing that we're seeing is that sectors like luxury and retail, you know, are going to follow what's happening in China. We see a lot of decline and stagnation there. And also because of, um, social distancing, consumer values like loneliness may lead to food or alcohol addiction and, you know, or even further obesity because people are heading to their fridge. And those things can just become an epidemic on its own right. So these values shift present even more challenges to not only our government, but perhaps also opportunities for companies that are willing to innovate with solutions. So so how can so what can brands do now so regardless of your company size or location or industry this is the time where we can really offer um you know like i said opportunity for innovation so i'm going to be diving into three best practices and tactics to help your business um go from digital business go to digital and how brands can, are already um tackling these challenges head on so let's see. According to Forbes, you know, 88% of shoppers believe that brands have the power to make the world better. And now more than ever, we've got an opportunity to do good in our communities. So one of the suggestions that I have is to contribute to the greater good. Um, whether we're making charitable con um, donations, you know, we have we see Lego here. Uh, they contributed. $50 million to address the needs of children and families impacted by COVID. And this money is going to go directly to kids who are, who need essential supplies so that they can actually continue to learn through play. 
Um, let's see. Domino's, um, we just had heard a couple of days ago, is giving away 10 million slices of pizza during COVID. Domino's has over 5,600 restaurants, and every single Domino's store will have 200 pizzas to distribute. And where are they going to be distributing? They're going to be giving it to essential workers, to hospitals, to medical centers, to school kids and their families, health departments, grocery store workers, anyone in need. And all stores now have the ability to execute contactless delivery. Um, we are also seeing, you know, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton is transferring its perfume and cosmetics facilities. Zara is repurposing their factories so um, they can create hospital scrubs for the health healthcare workers. And this is happening in Spain, Carlos. Um, Another suggestion that I have would be to activate your uh, influencer network. Nike is using its all-star roster of athletes and ce celebrities like LeBron James to inform the public about the importance of social distancing across all social media. So, um, and on, on top of that too, you know, they're also making charitable contribu contributions and donating $17 million um, in response to the efforts around the world. So I know it's already 922 and <laughs> I think that I already have a, do I keep on going? Or? We have about three minutes left. We can give you about four minutes, but let's go through them um, rather quick. And then we'll come back to them, Kalika, because you have a lot of valuable information. I want to be able to come back to them at the Q&A. Okay, great. So the second one is something with some, uh, similar to what Amanda was talking about is connecting in novel ways. You're creating fresh digital experiences. You know, she, she talked about that with her virtual swag bag, which I think is such an amazing um, idea. I might, I might um, rip it off. <laughs> um, so you can also offer unique uh, products for your customers, extend you and your team's skills on social media, and step up your one-on-one -on -one experience. So let's see who's doing that really well. Um, one of the companies I really love is Kiwi Crate. Uh, Kiwi Crate is uh, offers creative science and art projects for kids, and they're now offering additional ways to banish boredom with STEAM home activities like egg experiments and a free toolkit for grown-ups. Um, their do-it-yourself activities are categorized by your child's abilities, and they even go beyond STEM programs. And um, let's see, they have they have other um, tools like you can have. Um, art and home printable uh, food activities that allow kids to travel virtually with activities like travel to Italy, try soap scar you know, carving sculptures, or travel to Sweden. You can learn how to make apple podge, which is apple pie in Sweden. And while most retailers are still offering only 10% off their products, they are offering a deeper discount because they know that some families are having um, suffering from the economic downturn and they're offering 30% you know, off their products. Um, another great case study is Box Union. They're extending their staff's expertise on social media. Box Union Studio, she's uh, Felicia Alexander is one of my friends, and she's um, taking her boxing lessons online for free. They've extended their brand globally now and saw an increase of 3,000 followers in less than a week. And there's no better time, you know, to go beyond Zoom. Amanda said, you know, d let's, def let's definitely take the Zoom meetings to a next level. And, be, you know, if you're doing meetings, try a webinar. If you're um, experimenting um, with, you know, doing something like just recording your content, you should try doing live streaming, which is, is this what we're doing? Are we live? We're not live, right? Uh, yeah. We are recording. Okay, we're recording, but we're not live. So next time we can probably try live. Um, one of the tools that I really love using is, you know, Seinhauser's 4.50 BTNC wireless, you know, for noise cancel, um, cancellation. My daughters uh, play piano and the oboe. And so this really helps me concentrate as I'm doing work. Um, I love live streaming cameras like Mevo, and I think that you can invest things on things like ring lights. Like you have such beautiful light, um, Betty, and so I don't know if you have a light behind you, but you just look like you're shining. Um, there's also fantastic software to optimize your web camera. Eyeglasses is a great software that I just downloaded recently, and you can zoom in. Um, so if you have like a weird background, you know, you can zoom in so that you can just frame yourself a little bit better. And also I think that you can probably invest in like a green screen and like seamless backgrounds so that you can give uh, your one-on-one uh, -on -one experience um, a pop. Um, but anyway, it's 926. So if you want, we can come back if we have time to the next, the, to my final. I would love part. to. Okay. 
my goodness, Kalika. I don't know about the audience, but I would definitely want to hire you to come and, and show me how to do all of these things because branding is so important. And right now, as things are moving so very quickly, so are the trends and so are the buying patterns. And notice how Kalika was talking about the boxing lessons for free that goes right into the food and the alcohol addiction. And so if people are, are, are seeing that they're kind of getting bigger, then they can go into the boxing and all of that. So I can see how all of these things um, uh, kind of work together. I'm going to go into the next speaker to keep us on time, Kalika, and then I'm going to come back to you when we get to... Um, to the to the q a i'm really excited thank you kalika oh my goodness amanda you're amazing you're putting on these these things and bringing some amazing people but so now with terry billups oh my goodness assistant district director of economic development uh, worked with you uh, works with the U.S. Small Business Administration in the Los Angeles District Office, one of the biggest district office for the SBA. Um, and uh, so she is. Uh, her social media handle is on um, Twitter is SBA underscore Los Angeles, and her company website is uh, right on the screen, so you can see her company website. So Terry is the Assistant Director of Economic Development for the SBA in Los Angeles. Her current role, she's responsible for the economic development of Los Angeles, Ventura, and Santa Barbara counties. It's a huge job. She has experience in the Los Angeles District Office, and it, it includes serving as the Assistant Director, District Director, lender relations so ladies and gentlemen for those of you who are having problems with some of the loans that are being um uh, uh bottlenecked in some areas or that are being offered she is our expert subject matter expert uh her lender relations and leading the 8a uh, business development program as part of her sba career she was the deputy district director for the sba michigan district office covering the entire state of michigan and the deputy director, the DDD, deputy district director for the Pittsburgh district office in Pennsylvania. So she's got a lot of insights around the difficult times and the struggles that small business owners are going through right now, trying to navigate through the labyrinth of small business as they nav navigate through the PPP, SBA, you name it. So Terry, welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Betty, and thank you, Amanda, for putting together such a good panel. Um, I'm humbled to be, to be speaking to everyone today, and I'm hoping that the information I can share helps everyone. And I know Amanda and Kalika both mentioned, you know, that small businesses have to sort of reinvent themselves and, and look at the way they've traditionally conducted their business and now sort of pivot and figure out, how do I reach my clients in the day of quarantine, which is where we are now? Um, so. Number one, I think you know this presentation and this panel is extremely important. And what I'd like to do today is share some of the tools that SBA has. And again, when we talk about pivoting, you know, SBA has been around since 1953. Our our um, mission hasn't changed much, but it certainly has evolved, particularly now and when we're in such uncertain times with the pandemic. Um, so what I'd like to do is share some of the tools that SBA has that we can. And help you help you with but before I even dive into that because it can get detailed very quickly I want to make sure that everyone knows that you know you get inundated with information particularly now when we're all home and you know we have various ways to, to get information whether it's online whether it's you know the media um, on the TV but when it comes to our programs and when I say our that's SBA please always go to sba.gov or treasury.gov to make sure that you're getting information from us that is unfiltered, unbiased, and just straightforward information. So if your viewers don't take anything else from this in terms of my portion of it, just remember to always go back to those two sources of information because that's what's most important is that not only you get the information, but number two, you get the correct information. And as we all know, I mean, the times we're in are unprecedented and everyone feels like they don't have any control over, you know, how to help their small businesses, particularly, you know, if you haven't been able to pivot quickly to offer some type of 
uh, modification to what it is you typically do. You know, if you're a restaurant and you're typically having people sit in your dining room or, and dining in, and now all of a sudden you can only do takeout. Some have pivoted quickly, some not so much. So SBA is here to help with all of that. Um, the advantage to working with SBA is we have a variety of programs and that is pre-COVID and post-COVID and during COVID. So not only did we have you know, resources that were available prior to the pandemic, but now we've pivoted, which for government, I'm very proud to be working for SBA right now because oh. we've been able to go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got to tell you, Jovita Carranza, ever since Jovita Carranza, I know uh, she's she's amazing. And the leadership at the SBA, I have been working with the SBA for over 20 years. And all of you do a phenomenal job. Can we pivot a little bit and talk about um, the the COVID and what's happening right now? Some Some questions that are coming up from entrepreneurs, uh, certainly in Los Angeles, but across the nation. I think the most famous question that I've heard about is, can you apply for the PPP and for the um, EIDL at the same time? Yes. So the answer to that is yes. You're only going to be able to put in one application for PPP per business, but you can apply for both programs. And what we've been telling folks is apply, apply, apply. Yes. You know, and if you go through the two different programs and you decide that one is better for you than the other, then of course that's a business decision. However, you are not prohibited from applying for both. So yes. the yeah, so the answer is absolutely yes. We want we want you to find out what works best for you and then apply. Some people are saying if you apply to one, don't apply to the other. But yes, the word is apply, apply, apply. Don't withhold because you're gonna. You're going to disseminate that information on the back end. So don't worry about it. Just apply. Thank you so much, Terry, for that. Um, there's also some questions around uh, the, the banks that are open to actually serve. Uh, for example, I just heard last night, um, very late last night, that Chase is no longer accepting applications. I also heard that Wells Fargo was, uh, was given the go ahead all of a sudden to take in applications. I also heard yesterday that the smaller banks seem to be giving a, a little bit of a better service in, in taking the applications. Can you tell us, is there a place where we can find a, a list of the people, a, 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 like an updated list of who's taking applications and where, where can people go? And then with that, can we go to any bank or do we have to bank with them and who makes that decision? Okay, I'm so glad you asked this question because, again, you know, people are getting inundated with information um, about this particular aspect of the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, which is the PPP program. And the simple answer is, all you have to do is go to sba.gov. There is what we're calling a finder, a PPP finder. And essentially what it is, is you type in your zip code and it will give you a list based on geography of lenders that are participating in the PPP program. The great news there is being in Los Angeles, I always say is the best place in the world to be an entrepreneur, my opinion, maybe a little biased, but still my opinion. And the reason I say that is because the lending community in Los Angeles, Ventura, Santa Barbara, just Southern California as a whole is number one, very dynamic. And there, there is a lot of capital. And, you know, often people will say, you know, I can't find a lender. There are so many tools out there and so many options for small businesses if they need money. It's just a question of getting them aligned and to the right source. So as you try to find a lender for the PPP, if you call a lender that shows up on your list and they say they're not taking applications, go to the next one. And, you know, some banks are putting parameters um, on, you know, how they're executing the PPP, that's fine. If, if you don't fit into that box, go to the next lender. And the fact that in Southern California, last year, just for our, our traditional loan programs, we had over 126 active lenders. So in my opinion, there's no place in the world better to be a small business because we have a lot of lenders who are willing to lend. Yes. The money is there. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, there's another question um, uh, of what happens if uh, the SBA loans run out? 
So again, when I say apply, 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 the second part would be now, now, now. And of course, you know, we were giving, I believe it was, three, I, I hear 349 and sometimes I hear 350 billion um, to execute the Paycheck Protection Program. Yes. So there's a cap, there's a limit. Now, what happens beyond that limit? We can't speculate. But what I can tell you, the money is there now. There's money available, which is why I said, you know, apply quickly. So the other part of that is give yourself the best chance of getting that loan approved the first time you submit it. And part of doing that is making sure that all of the information that you submit is correct. You want to get into the queue. And we can help with that. We have no, you know, no cost services through various different resource partners that can assist with that. So as you go through the applications, which I have to tell you, they're very simplified, but you may still have questions. There's a very good descriptor um, as you go through the application itself. And there's a, um, a two-sided page that gives you explanation on how you calculate what you should put in each field. But again, if there's some question you have, you can reach out to our office by emailing um, w, just LADL at SBA.gov, and it stands for Los Angeles District Office at SBA.gov, and we monitor that box. So if you have a specific question, we can help you there, or you can align yourself with one of our resource partners and get no, no cost counseling one-on-one -on -one to help you walk through that application. But Again, I, I can't stress enough that get it in as quickly as you can. Get your documents together. You can download the application and then submit everything. Okay. Once you find it. Got it. I got it. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, we're going to, wow, a lot of really good information. And if you have any questions whatsoever, call your local district office of the SBA. There's a lot of misinformation. Somebody on the Q&A was saying some of the information that is not up to date, call your local office and they have all the answers. And if they don't have the answers, they can get them for you. I see some questions on the chat that I'm gonna be asking in just a little bit when we wrap it up. And next we have Carlos. So Carlos Piera Serra, um, who is uh, the Global Happiness Navigator. Uh, his company name is Delivering Happiness. And uh, you can go to deliveringhappiness.com and the, the website is there. And he surely knows how to deliver happiness. You see happiness all over him and he's kind of contagious. He's the CEO of Spain and Global Happiness Navigator. Happiness, passion, purpose, and company culture have been a part of Carlos's journey from the very beginning, from the DH's beginning. In 2011, he joined the DH team and co-created the foundation Make Happy Work model. Just a year later, Carlos launched Delivering Happiness Spain as a vehicle to focus more on serving Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, and other Spanish-speaking organizations. And with us here in California being so much Hispanic, he fits right in. So insights that he's going to be sharing today. So, so Carlos, welcome, and, and thank you so much for joining us all the way from Spain. Of course, uh, that's the magic about the virtual world. I can join from anywhere. Um, so um, I think we, we should do a second webinar only for Terry. I think your, your answers, Terry, I think they're so relevant for today, like right today. Because when Amanda, I mean, connected us and said, hey, can you join the, the webinar? Can you help us? And can you help us talk about how to increase employee morale in this you know, situation, this COVID, right? Because at the end of the day, society, we are in shock. I mean, you know, we don't remember one when we've lived with this before. I mean, I don't think, you know, anybody of us has a memory of it. So, and if, if they told us six months ago or even less, you know, three months ago, the world would literally close down, you would probably put in jail to that person. It's like, you're crazy. And that's, that, that's happening. So we're in shock politically, we're in shock economically, we're in shock in terms of health. And we're in shock socially. I mean, we are social beings. We're used to being with people and Latin people even, even more right, in some countries. So, so we, and that, like right now, we're not able to do that, all that. And it, it's crazy. And that affects emotionally a lot. You know, emotions are part of like, you know, we saw all these questions for Terry. What is that? That's uncertainty. And that uncertainty that we're asking all these questions is creating a lot of different feelings to all of us. There's people living alone at home. 
And imagine those feelings that they have, like boredom, loneliness. Uh, you know, they have, like, there's some people that I've heard, they're, they're going into depression. Um, you know, they're yeah. like, um, I, I found, like, the other day I read, there's some police officers that stopping people in the street, that obviously is illegal here in Spain to go out in the street. They're stopping people in the street, and the people are saying, I don't care, find me. I needed to get out. Oh. Um, you know, it's like, I need to, I need it. Like it was a physical need, right? I prefer to pay a fine than to die in my house. So emotionally, and same thing with families. Let's, I mean, alone is horrible, but what about with families? Try to, try to be a single mom working with your two kids at home with, with meetings and virtual and nobody to take care of them. Um, or, or a couple that both of them work and like, you know, the stress, the anxiety. Like I had a friend, uh, like a colleague from a client that became a friend and I was talking to her before and she's like, dude, I mean, I don't want to divorce my husband. I love him, but dude, <laughs> we've ha we're having a lot of conflict and it's, it's becoming an option. <laughs> so, you know, in that sense, you know, emotions are very present. What can we do for them? Because I think that's the key element uh, as leaders. As, and, and, and again, I think everybody's a leader now. Uh, let's forget about CEOs and stuff. Everybody's a leader. So what can I do for my team? I don't care if I'm the boss or not. What can I do for my team? Um, and so the first thing... Tips. What can you do for your team and what can you do for your family, for yourself? It's sometimes it's, a, it's simpler than it, 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 it looks. Ask them, you know, it's like, you know, show them that you're there with them and show them that you're there for them. Uh, you know, it's as simple as that. I mean, those emotions are totally different. So that's why, how can we do that? For me, it's three levers, right? First lever, uh, and, and let's think about an organization. And when I say organization, a family is also an organization. It depend, maybe some families are not, but <laughs> a family is also an organization. So let's think about organization, right? Yes. We have communication is one side, right? Yeah. Like um, transparency is key in this moment precisely, transparency. Like we've, I'm seeing clients that are, the CEO is communicating literally how the company is going, good news and also bad news. But it's communicating transparently. Guys, this is what it is. And this is why we're making these decisions. Uh, if somebody has a better option or better idea, my door is open or my, my Zoom meeting is open. Um, and that's important, Carlos, because when you communicate openly and transparently like that, you're bringing your company, you're bringing your employees with you. You're bringing your spouse and your children with you at the same time. So when you're open and communicating, a lot of times leaders feel like, they have to have all the answers and they can only show the best thing. What you're saying is you need to be open and by opening them up to their people, then they can bring them in the journey with them and the trust levels go way up when that happens. And when trust levels go up, we all know that the productivity goes up. Oh, 100%. And sometimes transparency is scary because there's another concept when you're a big organization and then there's press and there's all these things that's called reputation. Yeah. So transparency and reputation are two elements that are very important because if I am fully transparent, what is going to happen to my reputation, right? Um, it's proven that it's always positive to, to, to show yourself honest and open, but obviously it needs to be managed properly. Also, speed of, of communication. If something happened today, communicate it fast. No, yeah. we'll, we'll communicate it on Monday on our Monday recap. No, speed, right? So communication is one thing. Uh, second thing is leadership. And leadership involves in different elements. Uh, leadership, obviously, from the top, like role modeling. Like if we organize, I don't know, um, yoga or sport, virtual sport for all the company, the CEO needs to be the first one to connect to that, to that session, right? So modeling, of course, but also leadership in terms of one-on-ones, like also leadership and middle management. All the leaders, sit down with your team, have a one-on-one -on -one with no agenda, just open it up, sit down and be like, how are you doing? How yeah. can I do how can I be here for you? It's, it, and at the end of the day, it's 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. The, the biggest team you have, direct reports. We're talking about what, 10, 15, 12, 20 people, direct reports, and you scale down this as on. Well. So it's a total of what, 10 hours, one day of your virtual life. Uh, I, you know, it's, if you think about it, and that will make a difference, one-on-one -on -one with people. How are you doing? How can I support you? And the last one is actions, processes, tactics. It's more tactical, right? How companies can create a global platform, big companies, but then think about local execution. 
let me take Calica's example about Domino's. You know, I, globally, I decide to cre gen create this platform to help uh, locally um, the food, people for, for food. We have, but then the execution is local. Each one of the restaurants has 200 pizzas to deliver locally, right? So, and because, and what do you win with that? You win speed, right? I'm a sailor. I, I was lucky enough to cross the Atlantic Ocean with my dad and best friend and, and sailing boat. And, and I always said, when there's a storm, everybody's in the storm, not only the captain, everybody's in the storm. Everybody. And I, if I am in the middle of the boat, in the front of the boat, and I have a little knot there, the captain will ask me and there will be a lot more communication, a lot more things that are locally. So in that sense, it's like, it's very important to, to think about those kind of metaphors. Like, and I, for me, it's tactical processes, tactics, leadership, yeah. and Absolutely. communication. I think those three, le those three levers are key. And ideas, 2000, happy to share after this, a list Absolutely. of a thousand ideas that we can do. But I think these are the three levers and only one common ingredient. We're going to, thank you, Carlos, thank you so much. We're going to uh, be letting people know how to communicate with every one of you right after this, um, so that if you have any questions that are not answered yet, um, then we can definitely do that. So I got it. So communication, transparency, leadership from the top and the middle, make sure that you lead by example model, and then actions, local execution, make sure you execute and, um, and understand that the communication needs to go immediate and all the way down to, the, to, the, to every single individual. And you know, something else too, Carlos, is a lot of the answers are found at, this, at, the, at the front of the, of the boat, right? At the people that are, that are customer facing. So if, if a leader stands in, a, in, a, in, a, in their office and doesn't really connect, then they're missing out. Um, so we have some questions. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you so much to our distinguished panel. Oh my goodness, Amanda, you put on a great show. Um, uh, Kalika, there is a question for you. Any quick business branding tactics to share that we can apply during this crisis? Any something that's quick that they can utilize to brand their business? <clears throat> uh, to... <laughs> well, I had all those slides. You can. You, you guys want to copy my slides? So, what? Really? What? yes. Um. So, I really believe that there are certain laws for branding, and some of the laws include law of timing. You know, because it's, the truth is, the, the key to branding is to get the message to the right person at the right time, right? So you shouldn't be hawking wares that aren't relevant for today. So in my slides earlier, I talked about what the consumer sentiment was. It's really important for you to be aware, you know, not just, just be insular. Realize that something is happening that is quite terrible at this moment. So you shouldn't be hawking. Like, for instance, my book is coming out, and, you know, next week, Tuesday. I've canceled my event, you know, because it's just not appropriate. So make sure that you understand timing. Also, the law of consistency. When you, if you are or were sending regular communication, it's really important for you to continue to do that. You know, Carlos talked about communication and transparency. Keep that cadence, oops, sorry, keep that cadence going. It's also important to make sure that your website is updated if your hours have changed. Like I was, I was trying to get to public storage the other day and public storage didn't have any type of voicemail or anything on their website to say that they were open. So I actually had to go physically go there and say, and you know, get some, some of my, you know, audio equipment <laughs> from storage. But it's really important for you to make sure that you remember these touch points. And I think one thing you can do really easily is to check your reputation online because everyone is going online right now. And they're also not in the good mood to probably give you a positive review. If anything, they're probably willing to give you a negative review. So make sure that you know, because they have more time to complain, have a contingency plan and respond positively and quickly. And the ideal um, star rating on Yelp is four and three quarters. It's not five unless you're a hospital. So make sure that you set up Google alerts so that you're notified when your company is mentioned. And, you know, in this unprecedented time, you know, much is unknown and things will change really quickly. But companies all over the world and here in the U.S., you know, are already stepping up to meet these uh, challenges. And it's those who stay closest to their customers that are going to win. 
Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Talk about tips. Law of timing, law of consistency. Update the website. Check your reputation online and make sure that it's a 4.3 quarters, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then set up a Google alert so that you know when your company's mentioned, positive and negative. And if it's mentioned positive, rave about it on social media because people will, do, it'll become like a little pebble in the pond. So good for you. Thank you so much, Kalika. Of course. Uh, let's see, any additional advice for what else businesses can do during this time if their core business is suffering um, if for any of you? Um, I have some recommendations. So for us, <clears throat> you know, with the events industry, literally we are down 80%. In terms of revenue, work, there's, you know, we went from, and typically this is a very busy time for us because we're gearing up for the summer, which we have a lot of corporate events. So right now we definitely pivoted in terms of what we're doing internally. So internally, our team, um, we're working on, you know, Kalika mentioned marketing, enhancing our marketing. Normally we don't have time to do it because we're mm -hmm. so busy producing events. Now it's kind of, we actually did update our website, Kalika. So we're a good student. Um, but also like social media, reconnecting with some people on LinkedIn. We're also doing like internal training. We already do that quarterly here or actually even more frequent than that sometimes. But now is really the time to hone in. We're also refining our SOP, standard operating procedure. Um, you know, sometimes you're just so busy, but I think those are all really important in order to, you know, make your business grow. So we're doing that, refining SOP. If any of my staff is on the webinar, they, they're probably working on one <laughs> as we speak. Um, and even there's actually an opportunity to earn some money. So we're actually working on some in training videos that we could potentially even sell to other people who want to do events. Um, there's a website called proprofs.com. Mm -hmm. You guys could check it out. It's great. It's so easy to use. I didn't even have to look at the tutorial and I was able to do it and navigate it. Um, I probably hate my own voice, how I sound. I probably want to borrow, um, you know, any one of your voice to do the voice audio part. But it's so great. So we're using our time for that. And we're busy. Ask my team. They're all busy. <laughs> so Yes, everybody is. And you know something else that I would add to, to you, Amanda, is finding your why and really revisit why you're in business and what it, what's happening and to what Kalika was talking about, the trends and uh, really understanding what the trends are uh, because we must pivot. Everybody must pivot. So if you're not pivoting and you're frozen, you need to go back to your team, get with your team, understand why your company is moving in that direction and, and what are people's core values and what, and, you know, to your point, Carlos, what are your core values? What's most important to you? Beautiful. In what is your vision? What is your, your vision as a team? Get together your team and put together a new vision for your company as you're pivoting based on your core values. Everything must be done based on your core values. Um, and I know that because I just happen to have written a book on values. And so that's, that's near and dear to my heart, Carlos, what you're talking about. So definitely do it with your team. Um, website, pro, propose. Pro profs. Pro profs. Pro profs. Yeah, I'll type it in the Zoom chat. Yeah. Okay, please do, yes. I, I typed something in, but I'm not sure that that's the correct one. Okay, I am not seeing any other questions. Kalika, can you come back to um, some of your key points that you were going to make? We've got about uh, two more minutes before I turn it back over to Amanda. Okay, I've got like, I think three more slides. Okay, let's see. Do you want to... Give me the access, Amanda, to share yes. with me. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. All righty, here we go. Okay, so the final way is, you know, as everyone is, as you know, we're in this economic downturn, it's really important for you to understand that and know that um, our consumers are going to want different ways to pay. Um, let me see, how do I go to my next screen? Play, am I playing? Can you see that? Yep. We can see okay. it. Okay, so it's really important right now to build loyalty for the long run. So how can you do that? Champion payment flexibility, multiply rewards on your rewards programs, and create new delivery options. So Allstate, you know, their tagline is you're in good hands. I really love that they're, you know, you talked about values. They're living their values. I got an email from their CEO yesterday saying that we're gonna get 15% off because we're not using our cars. I mean, 
besides championing it, they were proactive. I didn't have to give them a call. They just did it on their own. Um, flexible delivery, talked a little bit earlier about Domino's. They're killing it right now. Two years ago, they were suffering because there were so many other people delivering food, but their stock is up because not only are they um, being flexible, they're offering this contactless delivery so that you don't even have to, you know, take, you know, take the pizza from that guy. It's, it's just going to be left right outside of the door. Um, and, um, you know, other people are multiplying rewards. So if they have some loyalty points, they're doubling them. If you have gift cards, they're extending the, the date so that you can use them, you know, two years later. That's really good. Cause yeah. the, once they date is there, then you lose your money. So that's good that they're doing that. Right. Yeah. And then if you can take a look at this screen that have, oops, I think that that's a little screwed up, but people really want to be able to hear from their brands. They want to hear that brands are taking action, making donations. They want to hear what brands are doing in response to the pandemic. They want to hear from the brands that they know and they trust. And so if you are a brand, make sure, like you know, Carlos was saying, communicate, transparency, get out there, and make sure that you are doing good with the strengths and assets that you have. That's it for me. Oh my goodness. So we have a lot of nuggets. So um, just to highlight, so building your website uh, and Amanda, what you're doing for the events and you're able to take over their business and really convert it into the new era. And I'm calling this the new, new normal is the interfaces, the matrix, all of the data, all of the information based on whatever event that you're putting on. Um, and what is your goal? You start with the goal in mind and then how do you pivot? So you're helping the company move to the new era, to the new, new normal. Kalika, shifting your values um, and understanding how the values are shifting and then continuing to, to really focus on the greater good, the innovation piece and activating your influencer network, that's really important. All of us have influencer groups, activating them. How do you activate them? Connecting in novel ways, box union and, you know, the boxing lessons at home, that's kind of fun. <laughs> and then the live streaming, you know, the green lights and the, the green panel or however it is that you're going to package your own brand and branding. And the pro, pro pops put dot com, I was going to say punto com, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you get a Spaniard in there. And then the, the training video, so make sure you go to that training video. And then Carlos, oh my gosh, boredom. Uh, people are feeling really down. And so how do you do that? You ask them. It's so simple. Ask them. Show that you're in the water with them. You show that you're right there. The three levers, communication and transparency. And then transparency equals reputation and be able to man maneuver through both of them. The speed of the communication, your leadership, managing from the top, but making sure that your middle management is also doing exactly what you're saying that you're going to do. You can't just say it, you've got to live it and you, because people are going to see your actions and that's how they're going to judge you <laughs> as a manager and as a leader. Your actions, your processes, your tactics, Local execution. It's not execution from an Eiffel Tower. It's executing at the at the local level. And and you know, taking a look at your core values, taking a look at your your vision for your company, and making sure that you bring your team with you to create that new vision for that new normal. Thank you so much. Thank oh you. Goodness. Yeah, I just want to over to Amanda now to say our last yeah. one. I just want to thank Betty for doing such a remarkable job. She actually uh, moved her schedule with the White House so she could be here with us today. Um, thank you to Kalika, Carlos, Terry. I think, you know, this is a, just a snapshot. As, you know, I can tell from this panel, there's so much more that each of you have that you can share, but we're just trying to condense version, right? But so thank you guys so much. And I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. But you see the hashtag is we got this. Jiao, which is in Chinese, and I also have it Italian. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but thank you, <laughs> and, you know, be strong. We'll get through this. Oh, and then a plug for Kalika, her book, Little Brand Book, is coming out. Please check it out. She's yeah, amazing. no one's going to buy it. <laughs> She's amazing. Check it out, littlebrandbook.com.